the forces of nature are released explosively, the results can be devastating. And yet, if the current scientific picture is correct, nature itself got started in a kind of explosion. Billions of years ago, they say, the whole universe of space and time burst suddenly into existence. The fiery birth of the cosmos has become known as the Big Bang. But the more we learn about this singular event, the less it resembles any kind of explosion we've ever seen. Now it appears that the Big Bang is actually still underway and it's picking up speed. In this episode, we'll hear from some of the world's leading cosmologists as they try to make sense of the Big Bang and its aftermath. Scientists who study the biggest subjects of all are the cosmologists. Armed with the laws of physics, an assortment of telescopes, and boundless curiosity, they've put together a picture of the universe that's strange, to say the least. And for the most part, they seem to enjoy their work. Well, cosmology is the study of the structure and evolution of the universe as a whole. How did galaxies form? How did they cluster together? How did stars form within galaxies? And, and how did the whole thing evolve? So really, cosmology is a study of our basic origins. I mean, just like we want to study how, how cells formed on Earth, so too we want to understand how all the material of the universe came into existence and gathered together in clumps and galaxies and stars and planets. So it's a fantastic field. It's just one of the most thought-provoking fields that I can think of. Cosmology has really made rapid progress in the last 10 years. Now, part of the reason for that is because 10 years ago we were so ignorant. Um, and when you're very ignorant, it's very easy to make rapid progress. And uh, we have made rapid progress in cosmology, certainly in the last 10 years, cause, just because all of these new observations have come available. The most notable recent advance in cosmology came about partly as a result of a survey conducted by Alex Filipenko and his colleagues from the University of California at Berkeley. They wanted to check up on the cosmic expansion to see if it was running at a steady rate. Back in the early 1990s, it seemed reasonable to expect that the universal expansion was slowing down. As Dr. Filipenko explains, it's all a matter of gravity. After all, if you throw an apple in the air like this, on its upward journey, it's slowing down with time because the gravity of the Earth is pulling down on the apple. And eventually, of course, the, the apple even falls down because the gravity is so strong. Even if I were to heave this apple at a speed greater than the escape speed from Earth so that it would forever go away, it would still always forever slow down because the gravitational attraction of the Earth on the apple never stops. So we expect that the attraction of all galaxies for other galaxies in the universe to be gradually slowing down the expansion of the universe. To learn how much the universe was slowing down, Filipenko's team went looking for supernovas. It turns out there's a kind of exploding star that's enormously helpful to cosmologists. They're called supernovas, and they can shine more brightly than a billion suns. This makes them easy to see, even from halfway across the universe. More importantly, one particular type of supernova, known to the experts as Type 1A, always seems to have exactly the same brightness. In that sense, Type 1A supernovas are like the 100-watt light bulbs of space, a kind of standard light source so bright that one could vaporize an entire planet. If astronomers see the characteristic pattern of flaring and fading, that gives away a Type 1A supernova, they know just how bright an explosion they're witnessing. By comparing that brightness 
to the apparent brightness, the amount of light they actually measure at the telescope, they can easily calculate how far away the supernova must be. Measuring distances in deep space is one of the greatest challenges in astronomy. So a star that reveals its distance like this is a thing worth searching for. So we were finding these distant supernovae and studying them with the biggest telescopes in the world, and we were astonished to see that they were dimmer than expected. They seemed fainter than we, than we expected them to be. And we interpreted this as being due to extra distance. So they were farther away than, they, than we expected them to be. And that means that the universe couldn't have been slowing down in its expansion because then the things wouldn't have gotten so far away. In fact, it couldn't even have been expanding at a constant speed because again, the supernovae that we were finding couldn't have gotten that far away in the amount of time the universe has existed if they had always been going at the same speed. So we deduced that in fact they must have been speeding up with time. That is, the universe is accelerating with time rather than decelerating as, been, as had been expected. The astronomers were flabbergasted. When they get results the opposite, of what they expect. Scientists' first assumption is that some part of the experiment has gone wrong. Measuring the brightness of extremely faint objects is no easy task, even with enormous telescopes. Any number of factors can throw off the measurement. Was the power supply steady? Were the optics properly aligned? Had they been misled by atmospheric conditions, haze or smoke, perhaps that had gone unnoticed at the time? But we checked and rechecked both our observations and our calculations, and the answer simply wouldn't go away. The distant supernovae were too dim, too distant, and hence farther away than expected, and hence they were accelerating with time. Pity the poor cosmologists. They had spent most of the 20th century coming to terms with the cosmic expansion. Now, it seems to be even weirder than they had imagined. Any explosions we know about slow down with the passage of time. The energy dissipates. The motions become increasingly subdued. But apparently, on the grandest scale of all, the universe itself, it's the other way around. The galaxies are flying apart from each other faster and faster as time goes on. But one group of astronomers was happy to learn that the universe is accelerating. The folks who measure the ages of stars had been trying to resolve a paradox. Measurements taken using the Hubble Space Telescope had pinned down the expansion rate of the universe to within something like 10%. Plugging that rate into a rather simple formula gives you the age of the universe and it works out to be about nine billion years. For most of us, that's an impressively long time. It's twice the age of the Earth, for example. But to astronomers, it seemed alarmingly short. They were convinced that certain stars were older than that by several billion years, or several giga years, as cosmologists like to say. You can't very well have stars that are 12 giga years old if the universe has only existed for nine giga years. Either the ages of the star 